The Works Progress Administration was created in 1935 by Franklin Delano Roosevelt and was the largest peacetime jobs program in U.S. history. It eventually employed 8.5 million Americans on all kinds of public works projects at a cost of about $11 billion. The WPA was headed by Henry L. Hopkins until 1938. It was signed to design to increase the purchasing power of people on the release by employing them on useful projects. WPA's building program included the construction of buildings, bridges, miles of road, and improvement of many airports. They worked in offices, schools, museums, and factories. The most famous product of the WPA was a valuable series of state and regional guidebooks. The WPA also conducted an educational program and supervised the activities of the National Youth Administration. They ventured into the fields to record the oral histories of former slaves. The WPA even funded the efforts of artists, writers, composers, and actors. A number of soon-to-be famous figures got their starts in the program, including artists John Pollock, writers uh, Ralph Ellison, and Richard Wright. At its peak, the WPA employed 3.4 million jo formerly jobless Americans. This accounted to early a fourth of the unemployed people in the country. But with millions still unemployed, Roosevelt continued to use the power of the federal government to relieve the suffering caused by the Great Depression. Congress, at Roosevelt's request, enacts the Emergency Work Relief Appropriations Act, which is the largest single peacetime appropriation in the history of this country or any country in the history of the world. New York City, federal jobs for thousands at the rate of a hundred a minute, while all over the nation work progress administrators are hurrying to transfer millions of idle from relief rolls to work payroll. Hey, Green Street, New York, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Municipal building, Borough Hall, Brooklyn, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Five billion dollars went to the Works Progress Administration, the WPA. Men and women hired by the government. 5,000 schools, 2,500 hospitals, 1,000 landing fields, 13,000 playgrounds. Even artists went to work for the WPA. But for Roosevelt, this was just the beginning. He would bring power to rural America, where nine out of every ten families still lived without electricity. For millions of Americans, impoverished children, the unemployed, the elderly with no savings, the disabled, he offered the Social Security Act. He sold it as an insurance policy for everyone. But the poor, Roosevelt was saying, had rights too. The great tradition in the United States had been private charity, community charity. Uh, families take care of their own. And so uh, the notion that somehow the government would take care of the poor or the unemployed or the old, this is something that was just not part of our tradition. We didn't know of it. This social security measure gives at least some protection to 30 millions of our citizens who will reap direct benefits through unemployment compensation, through old age pensions, and through increased services for the protection of children and the prevention of ill health. By the end of his first term, Roosevelt had begun to shift the balance of power in America. The rich felt the sting of higher taxes, and workers acquired the right to bargain collectively. Soon, great American industries, steel, rubber, automobiles, would be unionized for the first time. 
and the men FDR grew up with, who went to Groton and Harvard, have begun to say, that man in the White House has gone too far.